Okay, We've got a special treat right now. Kurt Busch makes the uh, chase, uh, the 2013 chase. He'll be going for his second NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship. And Kurt, uh, before the seating, uh, would have been in seventh uh, position. And, uh, excuse me, eighth position. And then after the seating, he goes to tenth. But, Kurt, congratulations. Quite an accomplishment. He's joined by Joe Garoni and owner Barney Visser. Single car race team. Uh terrific accomplishment and uh i think uh, i think it's just just a it's a cool deal and kurt i just want to ask you your thoughts about making the chase well how about them apples unbelievable uh the way that uh this this team has grown and what we've been able to accomplish it's uh it's an amazing feeling and we achieved something very special tonight and barney visser and his dream of a NASCAR Sprint Cup team, and to be a competitive team, he deserves all the credit. Uh, Joe Garoni, the general manager, all the people that he's aligned to, to help build this team, and uh, then there's guys like Todd Barrier that are veterans of the garage that uh, make big differences in small places like this, and everybody at uh, the Furniture Row shop back in Colorado. This is, uh, it was a dream, and now it's a reality. And it's an amazing feeling to uh, to sit here at Richmond after such a long journey for myself, but to be able to deliver and to do my part along with these guys. Um, I, I can't thank them enough and very proud to have driven the number 78 Furniture Row Chevy into the chase this year. Congratulations, uh, Barney. Uh, your thoughts? Okay. Yeah, I just want to thank... Uh, Joe Garoni, who we kind of built the team around eight years ago now, I think. Uh, he's kind of collected all these people, and uh, uh, everybody's just been putting in a lot of hours this year. I think um, uh, the road crews put in uh, several weeks, 100-hour weeks, testing, and, and uh, you know, it's all kind of paid off here. I think Kurt uh, expressed it really well, how we feel about everything. And, uh, but thank you, Joe, and thanks to the team. I mean, uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, uh, it's been real good. Joe, uh, your thoughts about making the chase a uh, great accomplishment? It is a, it is a great accomplishment. Uh, Why well, I have to go back and say at the, at the beginning of the year when we, when, as the team has grown and you start setting goals, uh, again, coming to Barney, uh, after Kurt coming on board and, and being able to bring Todd Barrier and some of the guys that we've had, come on board at the shop and then uh, Barney making the comments that you know I, I expect to make the chase and uh, when you're out in Colorado and you've gone through what we've gone through and you realize just how difficult of an accomplishment that is um, to have a leader that's got that kind of vision uh, we all just fell in right behind him uh, I, I don't know that we had that vision going and maybe Kurt did with his experience uh, but we all fi filed in right behind Barney's lead there and and dream comes true today. Let's go to the press box question. I think Lee has a question for Kurt Bush. Is that right? Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. It's actually for Barney. Um, congratulations to all of you, though. But Barney, we've, we've seen a lot of single car owners come and go over the years. And, you know, to have Kurt and be able to accomplish this, what kind of a dream come true is it for you? Well, you know, it's really. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it's a dream come true as much uh, as it's just uh, I'm in kind of in awe of uh, Kurt and Joe and uh, the whole team, what, what these guys have been able to do. Um, it, like I said, it's been a lot of hard work. They put in a lot of hours, and uh, it's much appreciated here. Come back downstairs. We'll take a couple of questions. We'll go to Al, Jim, and we'll finish with Tom. Al, Jim, and Tom. Uh, Kurt Al Pearson, Auto Week. You, you were sort of safely in into the top ten, pretty much all night. Not by great margin, but by a little bit. Were people were they telling you, okay, we're twelve points in, or we're eight in, or did you have any idea how safe you were within the top ten, or were you just racing like it was just a regular night? When uh, the race started and the twenty-four was fast and dominant, 
that's when I knew we had our work cut out for us. And we had, if he was going to win tonight, we had to finish second, uh, not knowing what uh, was going to happen with Biffle and Logano. But as the race progressed, I didn't see the 24 as often. And so I was able to relax a little bit. But still, uh, the, the, the nerves and the feelings and the, the emotions were all there of making sure that I hit my marks and making sure I didn't slip any tires, uh, try to protect the car and stay out of trouble. And any time that I did ask, I was just doing it just for conversation's sake. I needed to break up my rhythm uh, and my, my such intense white knuckle just to say something. And then they'd go, yeah, you're fine. Keep digging. <laughs> it was just more of a, uh, a verification and a, and a check and then just get back into work and uh, focus on making my lap times. Okay, let's go over here to Jim. Raise your hand. Let's go to Jim, and we'll finish with Tom. Jim Buttershaw, Observer, if Kurt and Joe could uh, address this. Obviously, your uh, alliance this season with RCR has helped a lot. Will that uh, – how much of a role do you think will help you in the last 10 races being a single-car team but not really kind of all on your own? I think it will still be business as usual. Uh, we have a great group of um, crew chiefs on the other side over there at RCR. Gil Martin, you know, um, the way that he's helped us and, and Harvick, those guys stand out in my mind. And we all know what Harvick's future is and what my future is. Uh, then we look at, um, you know, the 27 car and Slugger Labby and the help that they've given us this year. I would say that that should continue. And, and then you got Luke Lambert in that 31 car. They're, they've always been helpful. And we would say, I would say that it's going to be business as usual. And uh, we'll expect to to be there to do our part to help the 29. Right now it's the 29 and the 78 coming out of the, that situation. But overall, very happy for, for our guys and, and everybody that works in Colorado. It's an amazing group of guys that uh, they're, they're at the race shop at 5 a.m. every day. And the way that our logistical nightmare, <laughs> not nightmare, our logistical situation is uh, you have to stay ahead of the game. You have to stay about 10 days ahead. And Todd Barrier does an amazing job of balancing that. And I'll let Garoni take it from here. But Garoni's the one that's, that's helped allow us to operate like a big-time team in the state of Colorado. Yeah, um, I think Kurt said a lot there uh, about the same things that I would say. Uh, but what I, I would add is uh, the partnership that we have with RCR. Uh, when we first started, Richard was very uh, – supportive and really to the point of, of saying I'm not going to do this unless we do it all in and and really support you guys so they've whenever we've needed it or um, on, on projects when we're working back and forth they've always been right there with us and uh, we look forward to growing that as we move forward here final question Tom Tom you Jensen FoxSports.com Kurt congratulations and congratulations to all you guys you won a championship in 2004, and that's obviously considered the pinnacle of, everyone, of anyone's career. But with a decade of racing between then and now, is this something that you can really appreciate and savor for how difficult it was that maybe you didn't grasp when you won a first championship? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right, Tom. I took some of the performance levels of a Roush Racing for granted and then expected the same thing at Penske. And, you know, it was a, a tougher road there, but... Uh, we, we made the chase in a fashion to where it was supposed to be a given. And when you didn't make it, it was a, a devastating feel. Now to be back after missing it last year and the work that it takes and the commitment and the things that you just can't expect to happen because uh, you're not necessarily with the odds stacked against you, but it, you have to dig with dig in deep and you have to find something from within and Barney has been a great shepherd for me and this whole team. And it's uh, something special we achieved tonight to put a single car into the chase. We have our, our friends out in there, out as for other drivers, um, but yet it's uh, every man for themselves out there. And we have some muscle left in us. We have a great 10 weeks ahead of us. We have a test session that we've saved. And I think we can make a run through this chase. And we just have to uh, do the same thing that we did tonight, just keep plugging away let everybody else uh, worry about what has to happen, and we'll keep doing our deal out in Colorado because nobody can look over our shoulder out there. Final question right here. Let's get uh, Jen and the mic, then we got to let these folks go. 
Jennifer, I have two questions. I have uh, Jennifer AP. I'm sorry. I have two questions, and I'm sorry if the first one has been asked in some form or fashion. Your first pit stop on um, uh, on pit road under yellow didn't go the way that you wanted to, but they got better as the night went on. So if you guys could talk about the way that um, the, the pit crew stepped up and rose to the occasion from there. And then uh, the second question, do you think the 99th final restart was okay, kosher? I feel like the pit crew did their job. Um, you know, we needed them to hold serve tonight. Uh, we lost a few sets or maybe a break point. <laughs> Um, we, we went in leading at once, came out seventh. You know, that's not acceptable. Uh, we came in uh, third one time, came out first. And I, was, I was happy for them, and they, and they felt it. They knew what they did. And overall, I think we did uh, what we could on pit road tonight. Can we get better? Yes. And uh, the way the restart went, I couldn't tell you if he went early, if he went late. Um, you know, the, I was on the outside, you know, just trying to protect my car and not get hit from behind. And then um, I had, if I could have been more aggressive instead of on the defensive, maybe I would have had a shot to win. But we just, I didn't care if Carl went 10 yards too early or 100 yards too early. I was just going to go when I saw bumpers moving. 